Electrochemical cell is a device. What it do is to produce electric currents. So this current can either be produced by spontaneous chemical reactions, or you can actually use this electric currents to, to do some non-spontaneous reactions. So basically your electrochemical cells can do two things, okay? One is through the spontaneous chemical reaction, you produce electro electric currents, okay? That's the one thing. The other thing is actually just the reverse. So you can use the electric currents to promote some non-spontaneous reactions. So for the first one is actually the galvanic cell or the just the battery. And for the second one, since you are going to use electric currents to bring up some non-spontaneous reaction, so this is so-called electrolysis or electroplating. Today we're going to focus on the galvanic cell. So a galvanic cell is electrochemical cells, and then it's going to use spontaneous chemical reaction to generate electric currents, okay? And then it functions like a battery. How do people find things out is actually very interesting. If let's actually solutions, and then inside the solution, you have a copper sulfate solution. And what people notice is actually, if let's throw a zinc solid, into these solutions and after some time they realize the zinc starts to dissolve eventually you will see the zinc disappear at the same time you're going to see something actually precipitate at the bottom and that is actually a copper solid people found this actually is very interesting so scientists think about okay what's going on you start with the zinc solid and the image of zinc disappear likely they produce the zinc two plus and at the bottom, you see this copper solid appear. So they think in the beginning, they know they have copper 2 plus. What scientists think of is okay, most likely some redox reaction must happening inside these solutions. If we can actually extract out the electrons, then we can prove there's actually redox reactions inside the cell. So how do they actually prove it? They actually think this, okay. So at this moment, what they really do is actually the zinc solid and the copper 2 plus, they actually have an intimate contact with each other. So the if less actual electron transfer between the zinc to copper, you will actually all happens inside the solution. Basically, you can actually isolate the electrons from the solution if you're doing this way. What if today I have uh, two separate solutions? Inside the solutions, they say I have a zinc 2 plus and sulfate 2 minus and the other one I have copper 2 plus and uh, sulfate and then I put in a zinc solid on the other side I put in a copper solid and then I connect these two plates and then I mount a voltmeter in between and then I put a bridge in between of these two solutions in between these two solutions, I put some electrolyte, sodium plus and chloride minus, so that with these channels called the salt bridge. Salt bridge allows my cations and anions to actually diffuse freely through this channel. Of course, it will take some time to go from one side to the other side. And then by doing this, I am actually going to form a loop through this device. If length actual redox reaction is going to happen, then we know your zinc, we know zinc is going to eventually dissolve. So the zinc is going to produce some zinc 2 plus and it's going to into your solution. At the same time, when you go from the zinc to zinc plus, we know the zinc is actually lose electrons, right? If we use a conductive wire to connect to two plates, okay, then the electron is going to go through those conducting wires rather than go to the water solution because a conductive wire, that means actually they can transfer the electron a lot more efficiently than the aqueous solution. By having the voltmeter in between, okay, if there's actually electron produced by this electrochemical cell, we're going to see some value changes in terms of, uh, in terms of the voltage. So let's actually the very clever design. That's actually the prototype of the first electrochemical cells. 
when they have this set up, they indeed see the electric currents going from the zinc to the copper side. So let's house people actually figure out okay how to produce the uh, first battery in our history. So as time progresses, we have a much better understanding of these electrochemical cells now, and then people start to actually give a lot of terminologies. Okay, so we now now can define all the components much better now. The components that like, you need to actually pay really close attention to it. Here you can see. Inside your electric chemical cells, you always, always have two electrodes. The one undergo a oxidation reaction is called the anode, and typically is the electrons are pushed into the wire, and then it typically have a negative sign. Remember, we actually talk about how you memorize this uh, redox reaction. We actually have two terms, right? One is LoRa, the other one is actually GROC. So LoRa is you are going to see the species lost electrons. It undergoes oxidation reactions. It can serve as a reductance and it always happens at anode. For this specific examples where we mix the zinc and the copper two plus, right? We know the zinc is actually going to become zinc two plus. When you have a zinc become zinc two plus, you're actually giving out two electrons, so it's actually lost electrons. So we know the zinc is actually our LoRa. This zinc plate is actually the anode. On the other hand, you can see the copper two plus is going to gain electrons and then deposit on your copper plate. So we know the copper is going to gain electrons, it's undergo a redox reaction, it can serve as an oxidant and it always happen at the castle. Okay, so this N is the castle N. So these are the first things that you need to memorize. You always have two electrodes for uh, electrochemical cells. The second important component is the salt bridge. So the salt bridge is actually the way we make a complete loop so that the electron can go from one side to the other side. So we know the electron is going from the anode to castle. Species, okay, the K is going to move from this side to left side because the K is going to eventually receive the electron and got reduced here. So the K is going to move from this side to left side. So we always put a voltmeters in between the wires so that we can actually measure the voltage of this specific electrochemical cell. On the right, you can see after some time pass by. The zinc solid on the anode keep losing electrons, right? So you produce electrons and at the same time you produce zinc 2 plus. As time goes by, you can see many of the solid zinc, they disappear. So the electrode become thinner and thinner. On the other hand, on the castle ends, because you have so many copper 2 plus got reduced and attached to the surface, so the surface of your castle become larger and larger. To make these things more understandable uh, on the paper, right? Then right now we need to learn how to actually make all these notations. For this specific reaction, the first thing you should know is we have two electrodes. Uh, we call these electrodes uh, oftenly as a redox couple. So for a electrochemical cell, you always have two redox couples. And the way you annotate your redox couples start from the oxidation form slash reduced form. For example, we know the zinc solid and the zinc cations is actually our anode, right? But when you write out the redox couples, for the anodes, you actually write out zinc two plus slash zinc solid. And then for your cathodes, it's actually copper two plus aqueous solution slash copper solid. For the redox couple, it always start from the oxidation form, then the reduced form. And then when you write out, your electrochemical cells, 
the way you express your electrodes is actually you want to write out the reactant first and then the product. OK, if they are in two different phases, like in this example, we have. Zinc solid become zinc two plus in the aqueous solution. OK, so they are actually in two different phase. Therefore, when you write out your anode. OK, you need to write out it start from the zinc solid. And then it end up with zinc two plus aqueous solution. And then for your castle. It goes from copper two plus. It got reduced and form the copper solid. So you need to start with copper two plus aqueous solution and then become copper solid. Make sure you actually put a straight line in between your reactant products if they are in two different phase. If your reactant product they actually in the same phase, instead of using a straight line, you just use comma to separate the two. And then to complete the expression of your electrochemical cells, what you do is actually you first write out your anode. So anode always go first. Then you write out your anode, describe what's going to happen. Your zinc solid is going to eventually turn to zinc two plus in the aqueous solution. Then you write out your castle, okay, at the end, okay, and it can describe the copper two plus aqueous solution is going to eventually become your copper solid. That is your anode, that is your castle. And in between your anode and castle, you put in this very specific term. Basically, it's just two straight lines. What it represents is actually the salt bridge. Using these notations, then people will clearly know for your anode, what's going to happen is actually the zinc solid is going to become zinc two plus. And your castle, you know your copper two plus is going to become copper solid. So we say the anode typically always have negative sign, the castle always a positive sign. Even though we did not write out here, because you know this is actually your anode. So you know it's going to be negative sign. The castle is going to have positive sign. So when I'm going to be asked about this, in your homework, it tell you, OK, this is the cell notation you have. Then it's going to draw a picture like, like I just draw in our previous slides. A, B, C, D. Which component inside this electrochemical cell represent your anode? You may actually highlight, OK, this is negative sign, that's a positive sign. So then you should know that the A is actually your anode, C is your castle. And then the way you know it is because you see a negative sign here, then you know let's actually the anode. And then it can further ask you what is A if that is the cell notation you have, then you should know your A will be zinc, your C will be copper solid. To know what this means, you should know the first component is actually anode, the last component is actually your castle. In between, this is actually your salt bridge. Very likely, actually, where is this exists inside these figures? Then you should know this is actually D.